Hello, welcome back to the Stay Fitness channel. If you're new to this channel, my name is Daniela and I'm a fitness, nutrition and life coach and I'm specialized in obesity and diabetes management. So today's video is a bit of a follow-up continuation of the video I made early on this week, which is about my personal weight loss and my weight loss, weight loss journey. Um, as I mentioned in the video before, I was gonna talk to you through about how I managed to lose 12 kilograms of body weight fat, what method did I use. I didn't mention too much in the previous video because I want to really take you through all the elements that contribute to both weight loss and uh, weight gain. And uh, I want to give you as much information as possible so you can make your own decision uh, about how you're going to approach your weight loss. Uh, so today we're going to talk about insulin, what is insulin, how has insulin impacted my weight gain and weight loss and how can insulin uh, impact your weight gain and weight loss. So as I mentioned in the video before, I became insulin resistant due to my high carb vegan diet that I haven't researched, uh, which uh, led me to be uh, overweight and with insulin resistance. First of all, let's look at what is insulin. Insulin is a hormone uh, which is released by our pancreas. Uh, insulin regulates our blood sugar levels. So every time we eat carbs, insulin is re released and then the carbs get into our bloodstream. Uh, so what happens when we become insulin resistant? So basically when we overeat carbs for a prolonged period of time, it can happen that the uh, insulin, which is the key, and the bloodstream is the lock, this system becomes inefficient essentially and the carbs, uh, the molecule of the carbs, which is glycogen, doesn't reach the bloodstream, which means it doesn't get absorbed by our muscles and liver to be then used for energy. What happens to this carbohydrate when they have nowhere to go? They get stored as visceral fat in our belly. I'm gonna do a separate episode on visceral fat, what difference is between visceral fat and subcutaneous fat because it's a lot to talk about but this is why I'm gonna keep it separate so really stay tuned guys subscribe to the channel because you'll be learning a lot as we said insulin is the key to the lock um, that opens the door into our bloodstream for carbohydrate but also and this is a very important point insulin is also the main fat storage hormone in our body this is a very important point so if there is insulin body fat will not be lost because insulin makes us retain body fat let's repeat this point again because it's so important insulin is the main fat storage hormone in our body which means insulin will let your body lose body weight fat so pretty big news isn't it so now we know a little bit more like how insulin works and what does it do so when does insulin become a problem well insulin is never really a problem insulin does she does her own job which is to regular blood sugar levels and the problem is when there is too much of it so yeah as i mentioned before when there is too many carbs too much insulin gets pumped and it loses efficiency which is and it, this is all a vicious circle all bodies in when we're insulin resistant is don't absorb carbs we are hungry because we don't have the energy from the carbs we eat more and we will gain more weight so this is essentially how insulin resistant works and why it's so detrimental for our health and body weight composition and fat storage. So what are the signs of insulin resistance? The most obvious sign in insulin resistance, of insulin resistance is belly fat. It's even more obvious in women because women don't tend to store fat in their belly. Um, how estrogen actually dictates where to store body fat and it's usually breast, glutes, hips. So when a, as a woman you start accumulating belly fat, that's quite a clear indicator that something's not quite right. But when it comes to men, it's usually the so-called beer belly, which kind of like 
a little bit tough and it's not that easy to pinch so and another link there's been some studies that linked low testosterone levels to low insulin sensitivity um, so if you're a guy who is now regularly exercising lifting weights eating adequate amount of calories and you still don't seem to be able to gain muscle but say you seem to only be able to gain fat it might be an indicator that you might be uh, insulin resistant have low insulin sensitivity so that's another thing to put in consideration other signs of uh, insulin resistant are being always hungry increase uh, thirst so always needing to drink water uh, uh, frequent urination for women can be uh, irregular periods but also if they're not irregular in regular amounts like some periods some periods might be heavier some periods might be lighter in like a odd way not in like your normal way which of course means that you have polycystic ovary syndrome which is another argument that I will cover another time because there's a lot to say about that as well uh, and then can be dark skin patches and others but um, I think belly fat is the most obvious one, the easier one to spot. So let's just have a uh, recap of everything we talked about. Insulin is a hormone secreted by the pancreas, which regulates our blood sugar levels and is also responsible for fat storage. It's the main driver for fat storage. When we have elevated insulin levels, we might become insulin resistant and uh, start accumulating visceral fat and get into a state of chronic hunger, fatigue and thirst. So let's look at some solution now. I've told you a million problems. What is the solution? So if insulin is the driver to store fat and insulin won't let us lose fat, the most logical solution is lowering insulin. How do we lower insulin? We lower the substance that makes our insulin spike, which is carbohydrates. Of course, uh, protein spikes our carbohydrate, uh, protein spikes our insulin as well, but a lot less. So, first point is lower your carbohydrate intake, and I'm not talking swapping white bread for brown bread or bread is bread, pasta is pasta, white, brown, seeded, non-seeded. Is all carbs so lower your carb intake and gain your carbs from fruit and vegetables we also um, make you eat a lot more fiber which is amazing that takes me to the next point which is to increase your protein and increase your good fats intake now I'm not here telling you to eat just steak and eggs or anything like that I'm just advising you to increase your protein to a gram and a half 1.5 grams per body weight uh, per kilograms of body weight so this will take your protein day to about 30 percent of your day of your total calorie need my recommendations for fat is to bring it up to 40 percent good fats obviously no vegetable fats or trans fats or any weird fats i'm talking like nuts extra virgin olive oil uh, fat from like comes from meat like eating a chicken thighs uh, and yeah natural good fats fat has extremely low influence on our insulin so and it's, so it's a fantastic way to just get the calories you need without increasing your insulin so 40% fat 30% protein and the rest which is 30% with my math is really bad uh, from good carbs vegetables and fruits maybe some sweet potato and a little bit of legumes but really stick to vegetables and fruits for your carbs and which takes me to the next point which is to just generally lower your caloric intake um, so my best advice would be to keep a food diary, uh, follow this advice, like get enough protein, get enough fat, and then the rest carbs. Uh, and I really believe if you start tracking, you start also lowering your 
caloric intake because you actually realize how much calorie each food has and how much calorie has your takeouts and other processed foods which I don't really like using the word processed because most foods are processed but I'm talking like like chocolate bars and you know already made foods and stuff like that so keeping a food diary I think is without even trying to restrict your calorie too much just starting to have a good picture of what you're eating I think that would lead to better choices and probably lowering your calorie intake being a calorie deficit will promote uh, fat loss but it's not enough to just be in a calorie deficit if you're not gonna lower your calories because as we learn if calorie deficit or not if you eat carbs your insulin will spike fat loss won't happen uh, next point point number four is to have a high protein breakfast and uh, why am I saying that is because when we wake up uh, so our bodies is in a catabolic state so that we have anabolic and catabolic state which I'm gonna do a separate video about it because there's a lot to know about that as well I know so much to know as this is all knowledge about your own body guys so it's pretty amazing to know these things so stay tuned please um, so what does catabolic mean is in simple words is catabolics when the body takes from the muscle anabolics is when the, uh, the body gives to the muscle so when we are catabolic the body is essentially eating itself of from the muscle is extracting protein and other substances from the muscle to keep us going because we've been fasting for eight plus hours since dinner the night before and because we are waking up we get a shot of cortisol to and adrenaline to wake up and get us ready for the day so the last thing we need is a massive spike on insulin on top of that what we need is to get our body into an anabolic mode so it means give protein which is the, then the body's gonna take that protein and get into the muscle and preserve or build our muscle mass the importance of muscle mass again this is another huge deal that we're going to be discussing in future content so subscribe so yeah it's, it's a really good idea to have a high protein meal the first thing of the, the first meal of the day uh, this could be eggs a protein shake any protein you want essentially and then point number five exercise exercise is a fantastic way to increase your insulin sensitivity immediately it lasts for 24 to up to 48 hours after you exercise your insulin sensitivity will go up i recommend to do weightlifting because you will increase your uh, metabolism weightlifting burns a ton of calories um, and it just has a thousand more benefits which again this is another thing that we're gonna talk about but also walking is amazing because it's like it's no impact is really distressing sorry alexa is talking to me um so walking is really distressing it lowers your cortisol it lowers your stress hormones and improves insulin sensitivity and also things like a light cycle is good as well of course when it comes to nutrition and exercise I can help you with it, I'm a fitness and nutrition coach, so if you want to go have a look on the Stay Fitness website, the different uh, uh, home and gym programs I have, the approach to the nutrition, if you want to book a 30 minute free consultation with me, uh, I will leave you the link in the description below. And last point is just reduce stress, I know that this is like, everyone says reduce stress, how can I reduce stress, I'm stressed. Um, by getting enough sleep, trying to manage, so everyone gets stressed. Stress is part of our normal being human beings, is how we manage stress, how like if any every small thing that happens in your life gets you worked up, that's not good. Um, so it's, it's not about reducing stress, it's about learning to manage stress and i don't have a solution because everyone is different we all have our different mental states different problems so just try to you know take care of yourself love yourself 
and just try to take a deep breath and don't let everything around you stress you out. So, conclusions. We learn, hopefully you learn, what insulin is, how does it affect weight loss and weight gain, and how, hopefully, you have a better understanding on how to use this knowledge to aid your weight loss. Um, but of course, this is not absolutely all. We have many more elements to discuss that will massively impact your weight loss. So subscribe to the channel. Um, make sure you have that notification bell on because there's a lot more coming your way. But in the meantime, I would like to really thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I know they're a bit long, but I'm really trying to condense everything, uh, all the information. There's so much to know. Um, but hopefully, yeah, you came to this point, which means you watched the whole video and thank you so much uh, and I will see you next time. Bye.